Hello. Welcome to this primary candidate forum co-sponsored by the Daily Record newspaper and the League of Women Voters. My name is Charlie Sorensen and I'm the Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters, Kittitas County. Founded in 1920, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization with 800 affiliates across the country. It encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public power, public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties at any level. We don't care how you vote, only that you vote. League membership is open to all genders, ages 16 and over, and we invite you all to join us. Our moderator for this primary candidate virtual forum event is Catherine Murphy. Catherine has been a member of the League since 2017, where she has filled a variety of roles at the state and local level. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Charlie. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to moderate our virtual 2020 primary candidate forums. These events offer voters an opportunity to hear directly from candidates in response to questions sourced from inside the community. As with everything right now, we are learning how to modify traditional in-person events to virtual ones. The League of Women Voters records and retains a full unedited copy of all candidate forums. If any portion of a League forum is redistributed out of context to make a candidate appear to say something they did not say, or edited to make a candidate look bad, or in any way they did not actually look in the original forum, then the League of Women Voters will alert the media, provide the unedited video for comparison, and file appropriate complaints with any applicable governing authority. For the virtual 2020 primary forums, we record each candidate interview using the same structure, a 60 second opening statement, 90 second response, to three community sourced questions and a 60 second closing statement. The forum recordings will, are being offered in two formats. Viewers can watch each interview as a standalone choice and they can watch a compilation of all candidate interviews for each position in five part playlists. This compilation shows the candidates in the order they appear in the ballot answering the same questions. Part one includes this introduction and the candidate opening statements. Parts two through four show each question being asked, then each candidate response. And part five shows each candidate closing statements, plus my closing remarks. The forum recordings will be available at the Kittitas County League website and on our YouTube channel, on the Ellensburg Daily Record website and on the Ellensburg Television, Community Television, Spectrum Channel 191 and Inland Networks. Tonight's forum is the Kittitas County Commissioner District 1, Position 1 position. The county commissioners serve a four-year term and are empowered to set county policy, adopt laws, implement them, and except for responsibilities of other elected officials, carry out the day-to-day -day operations of the county. There are two candidates for this position, Kristen Ashley and Corey Wright. And now I want to introduce Kristen Ashley to the forum. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. We will start with your 60 second opening statement. Hello, my name is Kristen Ashley and I'm asking you to vote for me to represent you as Kittitas County Commissioner District 1. This is my home and I'm qualified and energized to serve you in this role. I enlisted in the active duty army as a medic in 2004 at the age of 19 because I'm very grateful to be born in the United States. I deployed to Iraq from 2006 to 2007. My experience in the army equipped me to lead from the front, adapt quickly and effectively to additional information that I receive while simultaneously accomplishing the mission. I have strong values and will stand for each of my neighbors. After the Army, I earned a double major in Global Wine Studies and Tourism Management. My education has prepared me to understand the agricultural business, especially value-added and direct-to-consumer sales. I believe in representing every person in Kittitas County, and I will listen to you. My goal is for every resident to pursue their version of happiness, and I will work with every st stakeholder to defend access to our public lands, conserve our existing farmland, and increase the county's economic sustainability. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now I want to welcome Corey Wright to, to the forum. Thank you very much for being with us. We will start with your 60 second opening statement. Thank you. And thank you to the League of Women Voters and the Daily Record for this opportunity to discuss the issues most pressing to Kittitas County. Two years ago, I was appointed as your District 1 Commissioner. Last year, the voters overwhelmingly chose to hire me to close out Commissioner Paul Jewell's term. This year, I am asking for your vote again to allow me to continue my work through a full four years. Although I am proud of what has been achieved, much remains to be accomplished, and I look forward to completing what I have set out to do. Though it could never have been predicted in any strategic forecast, COVID-19 has become the primary focus of governments across the nation. Kittitas County has not escaped this. Through initial response and now on to mitigation and recovery, your county government will need to be at the top of its game to help us navigate the road back to normalcy. As we face a new future post-pandemic, many new issues will arise around growth, public health, land use, and our ability to succeed economically. My experience, not only as your commissioner, but also through 20 years of managing crisis situations in private business puts me as your best choice to keep our county moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Question number one, what are your priorities for the county budget as a result of the loss of tax re revenues due to COVID-19? Ms. Ashley, you have 90 seconds to respond. Thank you very much, Catherine. I appreciate the question. So I spoke with a couple of our county commissioners that are currently in office, and I was reassured to learn that our county is very conservative in our spending. And so we are not facing the shortfalls that other counties who are a little bit more excessive with their spending would be facing right now. That being said, I would like to see us focusing on supporting our small businesses. When we're able to get the living wage employees back to work, then we can alleviate the burden of mortgages and unpaid utilities and things that our residents are really stressing about right now. I would like to see us focus as a county, and I know that we are loosening up funds in the coffers, we're trying to get out the CARES funds, and so we are supporting the community members right now, but those small businesses really bolstering that and giving them some ability to get back up employ their employees again, and bring back everybody back on the page of getting a living wage and paying their mortgages and being residents in our county and successful and productive. Thank you. Thank you. What are your priorities for the county budget as a result of loss of tax revenues due to COVID-19? Mr. Wright, you have 90 seconds for your response. Thank you. Like any, uh, project that's, that's, that's starting out without any sort of uh, real, I guess, understanding about the uh, uh, possible variables around what the future holds, it's important to focus back on the basics. And, and for our county government, we need to be looking at just that. Public safety, our transportation infrastructure, our uh, statutory requirements in terms of the courts and what the state uh, needs us to fulfill, and also our public health system. Our public health system has, has, rose into the, has risen to the top of uh, our, pri our priorities like no other point in our past. So it's, it's critical that, that we spend our resources making sure that, that those areas which our citizens look to as uh, the basic building blocks of, of their government and also their, their everyday lives are covered first. Beyond that, uh, we need to be innovative for those areas which um, which, which may need to be um, funded, but uh, may either need to stand off or look for new ways to leverage external funding to, to, to support those. Your county government needs to be creative about, around that. And my priority is obviously going to be making sure that, that, that those basic pieces are fixed first when it comes to what's beyond that. Um, we're gonna need to look at, at uh, possible new, new management structures as opposed to just simply being on the, the county budget as it has in the past. and. Um, also looking to, to see how we can um, begin to, to bring in new partners, which may not been, have been there in the past. Thank you. Question two, 
How would you ensure that county planning meets the needs of all community members, especially people of color, LGBTQIA, disabled, and low-income groups? Ms. Ashley, you have 90 seconds to respond. Thank you again, Catherine. That is an excellent question, and I think it is very important. We are facing very challenging times right now. We need to be leaders. There's so many aspects that we are leaders in the nation in this county, and this is another avenue that we can be. I think that I've, I've been speaking with the representative from Downtown Association, and they were mentioning that we could build pillars into our foundation, which specifically look at the underrepresented populations in our county and can support them. I also have spoken with some of my friends of color and asked for recommendations. I don't feel like a bunch of white people being at a table can make decisions for the people that are minorities in our population. There's 84% white and 14% um, Hispanic and then 1% uh, black Americans in our county. And it's really important to reach out and ask them how they want to be represented as well as our LGBTQ. Um, how to make every single resident in our county feel safe and like they can come to the farmer's market, they can come to our festivals, they can come to our celebrations and enjoy them with us. And then we can learn each other's first names and learn that we're all neighbors. And so I believe that focusing and asking, what does this event, how does this event make the minority population included or inv feel invited to it? Not necessarily that they have to show up, I would just like to make sure that every single member of our community feels welcome in everything that they're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question two, how would you ensure that county planning meets the needs of all community members, especially people of color, LGBTQIA, disabled and low income groups? Mr. Wright, you have 90 seconds for your response. One thing that, that we've always been uh, um, always been committed to as a board is transparency and accountability. So it's important for uh, folks to understand that, that that their county government is approachable, which is why we've been really working throughout this this, this COVID period to ensure that uh, county hearings um, are conducted uh, as soon as possible publicly. When it comes to to, to planning measures. Um, those are actually already in place for a lot of areas. Uh, our staff undergoes training and uh, areas that, that I lead, such as, for example, the, the Homelessness and Affordable Housing Committee, um, we talk about those regularly because uh, our, our, our most vulnerable populations need to be understood. And uh, we've, we've gone to uh, um, the extent of working with our partners and uh, making sure, for example, with a, with, with a new housing uh, grant from the state right now that, that our sub grantee is going to be uh, working to uh, provide shelter shelter staff that is actually uh, trained in, in uh, those needs for especially LGBTQ uh, folks. So we are working uh, through those areas now. Uh, we can always do better. We can always uh, improve. So I encourage those folks out there who, who, who see areas, let us know. Um, but right now, we're committed to making sure that all of our citizens have access to their services and are included in our county's future. Thank you. Question three. If elected, how will you ensure that the county complies with all state laws, public health orders, and governor's proclamations? Ms. Ashley, you have 90 seconds to respond. Thank you again for that question. I know right now that we are working very heavily with our prosecuting attorney and our attorney general office for the county and getting recommendations from them. And I would like to continue to do that. I have some questions. I, am, I have a meeting scheduled for next week in order to gain more information. That being said, I think that health and taking care of immunocompromised residents is very of utmost importance. But again, our small businesses also need that support. And so we are trying to work to, I think it would be best for small business representatives, the health board and our commissioners to get together and create a plan to make us 
clean effectively, make sure that everybody is being as safe as possible and that we are communicating well and everybody feels represented and like we can be successful with a plan going forward. It's pretty apparent that this isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And so we do need to learn how to effectively face the future. And I believe that's through coming up with a plan with all invested stakeholders in order to work with the current legislation. Um, that being said, I do also think that there should be more local control of the counties to determine if their county should be managed the same way as other counties. Thank you. Definitely. Question three, if elected, how will you ensure that the county complies with all state laws, public health orders, and governor's procl proclamations? Mr. Wright, you have 90 seconds. So this has been a very interesting time when it comes to uh, compliance with, with um, the law. Some folks think that, that uh, we need to be stepping out and telling the governor that, that, that we're not going to do this. And while personally we may have these feelings as a, as a uh, political subdivision of the state, we can't tell the state that we can't do that. So we will continue to do what we have been doing, working through our prosecutor's office to ensure that we have a full grasp and understanding of the law. We will work with our sheriff's office and, and public health team to make sure that, that the education's out there. And uh, we'll also do our best to set the example. Um, sometimes though, there, there's some, there's some times when we, we, we don't fully understand whether those proclamations are lawful. And we're going to, again, use our prosecutor's office to make sure that, that they are. And if uh, we feel that, that they may not be, then we may need it to, to push back, especially when our small businesses suffer or uh, different, different groups of folks might be treated differently than other groups of folks based on this. So it's important to, to understand that uh, as, a, as a commissioner, governing from the center, through a time like this is of critical importance. And we're doing our best to make sure that all groups within this county are uh, served and kept safe. And we continue to thrive moving forward economically once this is passed. Thank you. Ms. Ashley, you now have 60 seconds to, uh, to make your closing statement. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration. I look forward to supporting everyone in my county, whether it's including farmers and ranchers to make sure that our public lands stay open and available for us, that wealthy investors do not move into our county and take our farmlands or our public lands, and that we as locals can continue to manage them. I look forward to supporting every individual in my county and making it a safe and inclusive place for every resident. And I look forward to helping everyone to pursue their version of happiness as long as it doesn't harm others. And every, I, I sincerely defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I am qualified for this position and my military and educational experience strategically place me in an op opportune time where I can be of utmost help to my county, which I love very much, and I can plan on making my home forever. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for your vote. Have an amazing rest of your summer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ashley, for joining us. It's now time for your closing statement. Mr. Wright, you have 60 seconds to make your closing remarks. Thank you. And again, thank you to the League of Women Voters and the Daily Record. Uh, this has been a fantastic opportunity. And thank you to those viewers out there who, who have taken the time to watch this. COVID has, has pushed us into, into new areas, which we thought we would never see, but watching candidate forums online is, is the, the wave of the future right now, it seems like. So thank you for taking the time to educate yourself before such an important choice. You know, for generations, Kittitas County has answered the call when times were toughest. This period is one of those. My family is proud to have called this area home now for seven generations. And I am honored to serve our citizens just as my grandfather, grandfathers and grandmothers did. Although this time may seem difficult, 
our forebears have seen similar circumstances and came back stronger than, that came back stronger than ever. I am confident we will do the same. It's been an honor to serve as your county commissioner. While some of these issues were some which I could have never foreseen, I am proud and I'm honored and humbled to have been given the opportunity and confidence to do this job. And I ask you for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Wright, for joining us and for sharing your views with the voters of Kittitas County. As we conclude, I want to remind everyone that our ballot should arrive by July 17th, and we have till 8 p.m. on August 4th to return them. If you're not registered or need to change your address, you have until the 27th to do so online or by mail. After July 27th, you can register, update your registration, and vote in person through 8 p.m. on August 4th at the County Auditor's Office. If you don't get your ballot, please call or visit your County Auditor's Office right away. To get more information about all of the candidates running in the 2020 primary, the Kittitas League of Women Voters has created a nonpartisan online voters guide. You will find links to candidate websites and other helpful resources. You can get information also at vote411.org and at the Washington Secretary of State's office. Thank you to all the candidates who made time to participate in our event. The Kittitas County League wants to thank the Daily Record newspaper for co-sponsoring these virtual primary forums and to Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Network, and Inland Networks for showing the forum videos throughout the county. Finally, thank you to the many League volunteers who made these events possible. Your vote matters. Join me by casting your ballot in the August 4th primary. Thank you. Thank you.